So when I was a kid, I actually learned how to drive stick on a BMW. That was the first car. It was a 320i, and uh, it was definitely a great learning experience for driving stick. But today, we are looking at the 2013 BMW X5. This is the xDrive 35i Sport Activity, and this is what I would consider to be sort of a combination between a crossover and a uh, SUV. It does seat five quite comfortably and in fact this particular model came with an optional third row seat which we never actually used but uh, I can show you how it folds down into it in, in just uh, a second. So this BMW, let me tell you, the one thing that comes to mind apart from the luxury and refinement that you find inside and as you drive is that it is a tank not in the way that it performs but in the way of how you feel when you're driving it so BMW is obviously known for its safety like I said it drives like a tank but not in terms of performance just in terms of feel and uh, it really is a, a solid performing vehicle and uh, Let's take a look at some more of the uh, specs and some of the tech inside. So this particular model had a bunch of uh, optional packages. So one of them is the M Sport package, which includes these huge 20-inch alloy double-spoke wheels. It's got a bunch of other things like uh, walnut trim, which you can see uh, when we go inside. It's also got a performance package, premium sound package, technology package. So basically it's loaded up with all sorts of packages. So the base uh, MSRP on the uh, X5 is about 57000 and the price is tested on this particular one topped out at almost 75000 So before we go inside and check out the tech and some of the other uh, safety features and driving features, definitely want to show the engine. Some of the things that really stand out to me um, are these huge uh, stability bars. Um, for crash resistance. You can see them throughout the, the engine itself. This is a twin power turbo as you see right here. Uh, horsepower is about 300. Same with the torque. And this is a 3.0 liter dual overhead cam 24 valve inline six cylinder engine. Um, and it is an eight speed and it's got a bunch of other uh, features built into the engine including hill descent control and um, you know traction control dynamic brake control you name it I mean it, it, as I said while it it's feels like a tank in terms of stability and solidness uh, it'll also just really protect the occupants I believe so some of the packages uh, also include sort of upgraded headlights so this one's got auto leveling Xenon adaptive headlights. It also has uh, automatic high beams so they'll go up in darkness and go down when it detects a car coming in your direction. So this is the back seat or I guess you could say in this particular model the middle row. It, it obviously seats uh, three just fine. There is a uh, fold down uh, armrest here that has cup holders galore and um, Lots of good controls for, for air conditioning and, and there's some power jacks at the bottom. Um, you even have uh, dual seat warmers in the, in the back row and that's part of uh, one of the other packages that it comes with. So if you fold back the seat here, you can see that down here in the bottom are, uh, is another row of seats that you can just flip up fairly easily. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you can see it's all underneath there. I do have this uh, cargo cover in the way here so I can't fully pop them out, but you can see the seats are fairly thin. Um, there are other uh, climate controls and cup holders in there, but it's great if you need to lug around some extra kids. Um, you got two more seats here in the back. So the X5 does have an automatic lift gate here, which you can see popping up and you can see the, the cargo cover and those are the rear seats that I was just talking about. Um, there is a lip here so it does, you do have to kind of drop your groceries or your bags in, but you can optionally just pull this out 
and uh, lower it down to slide things in, especially if you put down the, the seats in front, you can really load it up with a lot of different things. So here we're not just looking at any window, we're looking out this huge panorama window, which opens all the way uh, till that back section. So it really gives a roomy feeling inside the cabin itself. And there is a shade that comes across if you want to uh, keep it fully uh, covered. So this is the shifter here. It's, it's kind of interesting. It's similar to some other uh, newer cars that I've seen. So it does have a lock button on the side. So if you want to shift into reverse or into drive, you do have to push down on the shift. And when you park, you actually just push the park from either reverse or drive and it'll automatically park. It's got an electric uh, parking brake, which you pull up to engage, push down to um, to disengage. And then this is the jog dial that controls the uh, touch screen over here. Actually isn't a touch screen, it's just a display. And then in the middle here, you'll see that there are uh, climate controls uh, for a variety of things. You can have uh, dual climate controls or individual climate controls. Um, and there is a, a multi-disc CD and DVD player here. And then there's some other buttons here that I'll go into that support some of the tech that you'll find inside of uh, the 2013 BMW X5. One thing that I found a little difficult at first to figure out was how to, first of all, find the glove compartment, which is here, but then how to open it. But there actually is a uh, button right here that you just push and it pops right open and it's even lit so you can find things fairly easily. So it is a push button start. You need to have your foot on the brake and you just fire it up by pushing there. And you'll get uh, all sorts of different warnings. The steering wheel will lower down into place. Um, it gives you a few different things on the heads up display here. Um, and uh, one thing that I remember from driving a BMW as a kid, and it's kind of hard to see right here, but is this custom orange color that you'll see on, on the tachometer and speedometer as well as the other displays uh, up here on, on the dash. It's it, At nighttime it's very distinctive, very BMW. So one thing that the BMW does have is actually a lot of different cameras. So if I were to shift into reverse and again you have to push down on the button and then uh, push it forward into uh, reverse you'll see the the traditional backup uh, display and you'll see how as you turn the wheel it shows your direction of travel you'll also see some lights light up up here and this is sort of a radar sensor that tells you if you have any obstructions or anything like that um, in your way but another neat thing that you can do is you have some other buttons that you can push like this one or you can have the parking one over here so this one does a side display so if I push on this, you'll see the car just pulled up next to me. I can see it over on my right, and then I can also see on the, the left as well. And then for the other parking indicator, you push this other button, and you can see almost a 360 degree um, display that shows your sides, your reverse, and uh, really helps you navigate into tight spots. You can see I didn't line up very well. Uh, within the, the parking direction here. So the main display is uh, controlled using uh, this jog pad here. Um, you can also control it over uh, some aspects on uh, the steering wheel, not as much, but most of the, the work is done on, on this little jog dialer. So hitting navigation, I can easily uh, set in a destination. And then you, uh, you can either dial through things um, using this dial or you can move the uh, joystick, for lack of a better word, back and forth to get to different uh, things on the control. So, like I can uh, enter in a uh, an address. Let's see. So, last destinations, and if I plug this in, start the guidance. It'll tell me via voice commands, you know, which direction I need to go. Turn right. But another nice feature that is relatively new to me is the fact that there is actually a heads-up display on the, the car itself. So I don't know if you can see this, but this little floating orange indicator not only tells your speed, 
but it also, if you're using the navigation, for example, it shows what direction you need to turn on, uh, you know, when the turn's coming up, you know, if you're going right or left, that sort of thing. And it eliminates the need from having to look down or look over at your navigation to see what's going on. So that was uh, kind of a neat feature that I enjoyed uh, using. So there are lots of different features that you can use on the built-in display. Obviously, you've got your multimedia, CD, DVD, uh, radio can do, you know, AM, FM, obviously satellite radio. You can uh, hook in your, your Bluetooth-enabled smartphone. You have navigation. Once you download your, your address book from your phone, it shows up under the office section. Um, and then there's some other options that you can do uh, by connecting to uh, using the, the connected drive, which uh, pulls up a, a bunch of different options, including concierge, roadside assistance, BMW online, customer relations, etc. Um, and lastly, you can, you can get vehicle info, like uh, I can get uh, vehicle status, it'll tell me all about my tire pressure, you know how much uh, how my engine oil light or my engine oil levels are things like that and then uh, you can get the the trip computer so you can see with this particular uh, session I've been averaging about 18.5 miles to the gallon which is right about uh, normal and pretty good for a car this big so anyway that's the the 2013 BMW X5 the 35i version and uh, you can actually see some more photos on my website and read more about this vehicle and that's at www.hitechdad.com and if you have any questions about this or other cars and car tech in general you can ask me on Twitter and I'm at hitechdad and I'd love it for you guys to head over to my Facebook fan page and give me a like and that's at facebook.com forward slash HTD blog.